Well, hey there, everyone. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. I got a question, and I, and I get this question. We all at the meetings get this question regularly, and it's usually a, a, a two to three year beekeeper that has realized that they can really make a lot of honey, and um, and they're starting to get a bunch of honey, and they don't know what to do with it, and it all of a sudden becomes crystallized. And they do sell it, but they don't sell it fast enough, and uh, it becomes crystallized, and the question seems like all we always get at the meeting, and I got on one of the comments, and I get on several comments, during the season is how do I deal with crystallized honey or keep it from crystallizing or what have you. Tallow, for example, down here, we get it a lot at our meetings about crystallization because tallow crystallizes really fast here. At least the tallow here in my area does. Privet, on the other hand, when I get that, seems to stay clear for a year, year and a half. So nonetheless, raw honey tends to crystallize uh, faster in some cases than others, but it crystallizes. And I always get that question of how do I deal with it? Well, you know how I do. This is how I do, not how to, of course. Here is what I do. Year two or three, I built this little box. This is just simply a crate that I was, that it was being thrown away at work. And all I did was put a dimmer switch on it, folks, right here. And I ran cord, uh, some old Romex I had, so it's real cheap on the cheap. All I had, I had this, all I had to buy was a switch. I had this from uh, uh, remodeling our kitchen. I found this old latch, I put it on there. See, it's just your regular standard little window latch. I think I bought that. And I just put inside this box this stuff that people are using on top of hives now and that bulb. And I can do it up and down. Now, I don't have to keep this but about halfway overnight and put the honey on these shelves. And we'll absolutely have it completely liquid overnight. The only issue with these types of heater boxes is as these incandescent bulbs, and you can see honey spilled on it, as they finally cycle out of the system, uh, we're not going to see those anymore. So I don't know how that's going to work out in the future. A heat lamp will work in here. You just got to watch how many watts you're putting inside what type of socket so a bigger box with a heat lamp probably work too this thing is plenty hot i put a thermometer on there no thermostat on this you can easily put a thermostat on one too though to go on and off for you but what i found is i could put 12 bottles in here put it in overnight and they're liquid the next day you gotta even watch out you don't get it too hot then i wanted to move to something bigger because i was getting bigger and i went to a commercial freezer that a guy was throwing away now, for those heater boxes, you can use a refrigerator like that, too. And do what I'm going to show you with this commercial one, but that's a real fridge and it works. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. But this commercial freezer, I got this from my buddy Kenny. He had bought two of them, but you can buy much simpler ones now with receptacles that plug into the wall. And this thing, what's nice, is I can set it. So right now, it's 96 degrees in there. It's Fahrenheit. It tops out at 100 it cuts back off at 100 and then my differential is five degrees so when it gets to 95 it turns back on i don't know why i got it set that hot oh i know why. i put two buckets in here that's why so the lights aren't on but what i have in here are i have that that thing wired to turn on a heat lamp and just a regular lamp um and what i was saying earlier is you got to watch the wattage on these lamps there it goes cut on or uh, switched on these reset these lights you got to watch what wattage you're using for the lamps you don't want to have a fire hazard i can keep two buckets in here i can actually keep uh my comb honey in here without melting it and i keep everything bottled that is already bottled that is not that did not sell at the last market then just what i'm gonna do tonight i bottle up a bunch for the market tomorrow put it in here overnight whatever doesn't sell comes back gets put in here for the week that way i don't have a problem with honey um crystallizing in the bottles and having to warm up my little cabinet i do use that for my personal honey because this this particular thing here this big commercial freezer won't necessarily warm it all the way till it's completely liquid so if i get some from somebody like the neighbor needs some uncrystallized or whatever or people give it to me that i know that i sell to i put it in there 
I warm it for them and I bring it out. This is just mainly for storage and for getting my buckets warm. All these buckets of honey, I got buckets of honey under there. I got these buckets. We got buckets under there, buckets under those boxes. All of that honey by this time of year is solid. So I keep two buckets in here and what I'll do is take these out, put them in my bottler, and then I will put two more in there to sit for the, usually about a week and a half, two weeks before I have to use them again. And that'll loosen them up so that they go in the bottler. And that brings me to the last thing is bottler. So what I realized early on was all this trying to heat and warm and keep warm. Now that commercial freezer came about the same time the bottler did, but to try and get it uncrystallized after it has crystallized is such a pain. I got this bottler a few years back and I realized as a small beekeeper that wants to sell honey on the weekends and, and by word of mouth uh, uh, with friends and family and people from work and in town, you know, just on the side, that a bottler is almost a necessity if you're really serious about it and making, a, you know, 100 or so gallons and you're going to sell it throughout the year just here and there. To have that where I can just, just bottle honey on the go and don't have to worry about it crystallizing to me as a person that's got a smaller operation it's a great deal and and people would say well wow it's a lot of money to spend i only have a you know you know i have 20 30 hives i'm not really needing to spend that much money well that saves so much time and energy and problems and you have honey ready to go at any time you need because i keep mine running all the time year round i don't a lot of people i hear it turn it off and then heat it back up to me it takes just probably more electricity heat it back up than just keep it steady so I always have money on the go the last thing is if you have buckets you can always get one of these I got this one but I would recommend spending the extra money to get yourself one with a thermostat because this thing gets so hot and when I loan it I tell people once it starts getting that honey warm stir it every couple hours because that thing will get honey so doggone hot it, it says it only gets to like 110 or something but it gets that honey hot I burned a bucket years ago when I first bought it I don't use it much. Actually, I haven't used it in years. I've loaned it. It works. You just got to keep stirring the honey so it doesn't burn. So it's not something I would do overnight anymore, ever. But, or I would get one with a thermostat. And then you can come up with neat little tricks, like these little heater pads. Y'all know Bruce the Alligator Man, right? He gave me these. They used to use these for turtle eggs. And what he found with his honey was he was putting these in the bottom of a cooler, plugging them in, and setting his buckets on top. Kept the buckets for him, kept them from getting too solid. So that worked. Bruce Jenny, he talks about putting jars or honey bottles in a five gallon bucket and putting a heater blanket around it. Heater blanket works good for either warming a bucket or warming bottles inside a bucket. So that apparently works uh, pretty well. So all kinds of ways, but that's how I do it. I was asked a question and so I wanted to make a quick video showing how I did it and that's how I do it. It's real simple, it works for me. Um, mostly stuff I've made from junk I've got outside of buying that bottle or maybe that band everything else has been stuff I've just put together scraped together and it works great works good for my system not planning on growing this operation any bigger than I am now so I don't plan on having to build anything major anything uh, uh, extravagant but just keep them work, working with the uh, little rudimentary things I got so I hope you enjoyed it I appreciate all y'all support as always y'all have a wonderful wonderful afternoon evening weekend week or whatever it may be for you when you watch this it's Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees, telling you about how I do my honey warming. Y'all take care, and God bless you. We'll see y'all later.